I've already been at that area in that, in that stage where I felt like I could be done. So I carry that in the back of my mind. What up, everyone? Shaquille Mahjoudi here for CBS Sports. And you know who this is. He is a four-time world champion, former Royal Rumble, King of the Ring, and Money in the Bank winner with hair on his head the same color as the marks he leaves on opponents' chests. The newlywed Seamus. How's it going, my man? How are you doing, Shaquille? All right? What's happening? I'm doing well, thank you. How are you feeling? Uh, I feel great. I've been, well, I was kind of bad. I was in bed with the flu for the last four days. I think I celebrated the wedding too hard, so I'm, I'm on the recovery side of it. But uh, no, I feel good today. Just got off the Peloton, man. That's my, uh, that's my morning routine, so I'm back into it. Felt, I felt like I was letting my fitness go down a little bit over the last week, but sometimes you need to do that, you know, to kind of yes. reset. Think so yeah i mean you know i think uh worth hopefully the payoff of a wonderful wedding i know yeah. we had some of your uh superstar friends in attendance for that shout out to the chucky doll in the back i think i saw a little dog running around um, <laughs> no. more ginger more ginger hair the things we have in the sense better you know I mean? well you know it's, uh, branding's very important I even have a ginger dog upstairs called Vesper, yeah. So, um, but yeah, yeah, I just an incredible week, uh, weekend, week. I uh, had some people, friends, and close friends and family over from Ireland. But actually, my ma's still in here. I'm trying to stop her from cleaning, doing cleaning in the house. So I'm like, ma, you're on holidays. You just stop and just relax before you go home. Stop trying to clean everything. It's already clean. You know what I mean? Yeah, Don't yeah. worry about it. She's a mother. Sometimes you just got to let them do what they need to do, you know? But still, you're a big, you're a big superstar, physically imposing, but very much still mama's baby boy, I imagine. Oh yeah, my, my mom will just won't, she doesn't put up with any of it, so she just like doesn't listen to me. She makes her own rules. <laughs> as Irish mas do, so I'm okay with that. Uh, you know, speaking about the incredible week you have, I mean, what about the incredible run we've been on? I, I find it so interesting because you've accomplished. I mean, I kind of read the list of accomplishments, world titles. Uh, you know, I think you're only the second superstar after Edge to get that collection of money in the bank and Royal Rumbles and King of the Rings. But at least in the estimation of a lot of fans, like this is going down as possibly the greatest run of Sheamus's career. The fans seem so into it, the quality of the matches, the storylines. How does it feel for you to at this stage in your career already sort of having Hall of Fame accomplishments under your belt? be putting in the sort of work that you are and getting the kind of reactions that you are? Oh, it's an incredible feeling. Like, I, I didn't kind of came out of left field, to be honest. Um, like, I've kind of been doing this my whole career, you know. That's, I, I'm very, very physical in the ring. And I think there's a couple of things at the beginning of my career that kind of marred that, the whole stories of Triple H and some other stories backstage were total BS. But um, I just feel like I've been, like, no matter what I did, especially in the 2012 run when I was world champion the stuff of brian like it didn't matter what i did uh, you know the, the the crowd had turned against me um because they felt the machine was behind me and uh it just didn't matter how how hard i beat up my body i just wasn't going to win them over so uh i went away and i came back as a heel but yeah you know look i i love what i do you know i'm still very passionate about what i do um the more probably more passionate now than i've ever been and you know, because the older you get, obviously, the more bumps and bruises and miles you have in your body, uh, you have to take better care of it. And you have to be smarter. And, you know, when I was off, uh, before I came back, uh, before I came back for this run, um, when I got that concussion at Mania in New York, I thought my career was going to be over. And, you know, I kept doing Celtic Warrior workouts. And I was actually at Edge's house. And I saw all these titles on the wall. And I saw the icy title. And I was like, I can't. You know, I, I can't, I, I can't give up now. You know, I'm so close to getting that final piece in the puzzle. And uh, it motivated me to myself to just to get back and come back in the best shape possible. And the channel as well, Celtic Warrior Workouts was, was huge for me as well because it kept me going. And even to, during times when creative leader was something for me, it gave me a creative output and also helped me bond with a lot of the, the guys and girls, um, the men and women in WWE by doing workouts with them because like a lot of those workouts, like, you know, we share bus rides and stuff in Europe and all that, you know, when we're overseas and, you know, we see each other in the locker room, but, you know, generally everybody's busy doing their own thing. And, you know, I got to, because of Celtic Warrior workouts and working out with all these, these um, all the superstars, I got to just, you see the beginning, like some of those episodes, there's, it's not, there's not great chemistry between us. 
But by the end, you, you kind of bond. And that was the beauty of Celtic Warrior work. It's the fact like you go through war together in a workout and then you come out to the side, you, you got this bond. And um, it, it was incredible for me. But yeah, I, I knew when it's when the edges place, I knew like I had more to prove. And I came back, you know, what have I got to lose? You know what I mean? Like, I, you know, I, I, I thought my career was going to be over. I got a second chance. And like, you know, every, every time I get in that ring, it's like, you know, it's a blessing. It's an opportunity for, to, to be show everybody what I can do because that literally could be my last time in the ring. And I don't want to go out in that way. I don't want to go out in a way where it's something like this. Or so my mentality is to treat every match as possible, you know, given the time and given the segments and given where it is, but try and make every match we can do like a WrestleMania moment, you know what I mean? Or a WrestleMania match. And I can't go out there and half-ass anything. It's just not my DNA. I want to go out there and I want to, I put, I want to put on banger after banger after banger and I want to raise everybody like you know the stuff I did with E kind of really started I did stuff with Jeff which was awesome it was very controversial at the time especially being in that uh, environment in the performance centre and then with the Thunderdome stuff with E really just and then on to Raw and then Riddle you know what I mean and then Damien Priest and I'm sure there's a couple and then a couple in between there as well Humberto got to work with him and a lot of other new guys coming up and then you know it just kept going and going and then Drew and then Walter Bob, you know, it's it's uh, it's been. I'm, I love it. Like I, I, I'm just having the most fun I've ever had. And I think the other thing is too is, and I feel like I'm talking a lot here. It, but this is what we're here for. They're not here to hear from sick. me, Seamus. I appreciate. It. It's because I've been sick of bed for the last three days. I haven't been able Got to let it all out. But uh, I didn't want. But no, I think. Um, I also think that, like you know, it's uh, it's an opportunity to raise a lot of these guys up too. You know what I mean? And, and get the most out of them. And uh, as I said, it's just for me, it's just so much fun. But I don't think I'm doing too much different than when I've done my entire career. I just think the biggest thing I think is the weight's off my shoulders. I'm not so concerned about everything and paranoid about everything and every nitty gritty little thing. I'm just going out there and I'm just going out like just totally relaxed and totally like worry free. Um, if you'd be willing to share, I know you mentioned how you can't go out without giving it your all and um... Is there a timetable that you have in mind? Is it just an age thing? Is it like what? Why do you think you're on the last stretch here? If I may ask. Well, no, I don't think I'm on my last stretch. Okay. I just mean like it could be, you know, you, you know, after getting that concussion and, and being on the shelf for so long, like it's not that I I I, I, I can go on. I feel like right now I'm going on for a long time. I feel like I'm taking better care of my body. I feel like I'm more into it. I do a lot of different stretches and yoga uh, stuff. I think I'm better smarter with my body and taking care of nutrition but i mean like anything can happen in that ring like you know it's the, the biggest thing the, the biggest the easiest thing to call we back in the day was fake you know people go oh it's fake and all i can tell you right now like we're we're an entertainment business but the physicality is real man like i have I've had multiple concussions i i got dropped on my neck um I still have some issues with that now and again, but most of it's kind of like I have to be able to work around it. Um, but there's a lot of things that happen. Like, and as I said, like it just could be that one thing and not just for me, for anybody, but I've already been at that area and that, in that stage where I felt like I could be done. So I carry that in the back of my mind. And I, if I go out and something happens, I want it to be, I don't want to go out on a, like, a, you know, a lull. I want to go out on a high. Mm -hmm. For sure, man. Um, what, why do you think it is that the crowd is connecting so much with you on this run? Um, so one good friend of mine, uh, I was trying to figure it out too, actually, but one good friend of mine just said like, you know, finally, finally letting the crowd in. Um, I'm not pretending anymore. I'm not trying to be something I'm not. I'm just, just me. I wear my heart and my sleeve. And I think, uh, the fact that I'm just letting the crowd in and let, give it like, bringing them in with me in those moments. You know what I mean? I feel like that, that that's a big part of it too. Uh, I, I don't have the exact answer for it, but that, that was a good answer he gave me. And I feel like I always, for the last couple of years, I've always wanted to involve the crowd more. I've always wanted to bring them in more because that's what they're there for. If, they're, if the fan, the be fans, Hunter, Triple H once said to us, I guess, years ago, talking about social media, Man, I don't know, eight years ago, but he was saying like, you know, we were, WWE was the first uh, interactive audience, you know what I mean? Like, they, from day one, like, they've always been involved with the science and everything, you know, and involved, in, like, they're always so much part of the of the show. Like, you go to an NBA or a football game, whatever, they're there, but 
the concentration of the players and stuff is basically on the game. In our world, you know, there's a huge opportunities opportunities every single week to let the fans in, you know, and bring them in and make them as much as part of the of the uh, show as, as the the performers are, as the as the, the superstars, the be superstars are men and women. So, you know, I, I've, I I'm more aware of that now too, and I, I love bringing them in. I love bringing them in for those moments, and involving them, and just feeding off their energy. It's great for me. And I'm, I guess before I was a little bit, I don't know. I don't know what it is. Just I wasn't. I was a little bit reluctant. Um, a last thing on this part of your career before we talk more about the Celtic Warrior workouts. Um, yeah. And well, and and I want to say thank you, Seamus, because sometimes <laughs> you're looking for a good story, and it's hard to pry that out of someone. But uh, yeah. you've been very giving today, and I appreciate it. Ah, you talked. Yeah, thanks. Sorry, for... you talked about all the people that you competed with and bringing them up. What about the chemistry between you and the brawling roots? It seems like you and yeah. Butch and Ridge Holland have really stumbled upon something really special here. Yeah, they're co- this is they're, they're great, and that's another aspect too. You know, like I've always been the mindset like that younger younger talent coming up and new talent coming up, they're fresh, and you know, you use that as a motivation. Like you don't use that to hold them down, like our motivation to hold them down. You use that to bring them up and, and inspire you and, and reinvigorate you, and that's exactly what the boys have done. Like I, I you know. Ridge came up first, uh, had a very similar look. I was doing the kind of like, you know, the, the gimmick, the shamey character, you know. Um, and uh, and Ridge had the real kind of like Peaky Blinders look and all. And it just, I, I, you know, it just fit for both of us. Um, and I was, you know, he was going to put under my wing. So my job is to make him as good as possible and help him get, you know, his feet wet as quick as possible and, find, and you know, be very, find himself comfortable. You know, a mentor, and, and that's for me, it's incredible uh, honor and re- huge responsibility, but also incredible honor for me to do that, to help the younger talent. And then when Butch came in, I was already very aware of Pete Dunn and uh, like how good he is. Like that guy's been wrestling since he was 12 years old. Like he's an incredible mind for uh, for what we do. Incredible minds, just always thinking outside the box. And both of the lads thinking outside the box. And, you know, like we came in, I didn't read, but I didn't read no. Uh, Butch personally, Pete Dunn personally, and uh, when we started working together, you know, instantly, like, you know, he saw diff- different ideas, you know, that like what we're used to, what we're talking about, and I'm like, so now I, you know, we're doing stuff together. I'll, I'll ask Ridge and I'll ask Butch, like, what do you think of that? Like, we'll come up with ideas, we bounce them around. Like, there's no like, well, I'm here the longest, and this is my idea, and that's and that, that, that 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 that's that's the way it has to be. Absolutely not. Fresh ideas, man. Fresh ideas from different places out of the box. I welcome them. And it's helped me too. Like, you know, it's it's helped me think in a different way. Because it's so easy to think in the one, be one, I wouldn't say one dimensional, but so easy to get stuck in a mindset of certain things and how things have been done. But the business is constantly evolving, it's constantly changing. And those guys bring in fresh ideas. Um, and they're killing it. They really are. Like, and Ridge has really overcome a mountain obstacles in the beginning. He's very unlucky in the beginning, um, and he's a great lad. And uh, and you know him and Pete are just tearing it up. And you can see his confidence just growing and growing. And Butch as well. He was given this off the cuff character, and you know I've seen it before. WB people who are no longer with the company. I've seen them given characters, and it's a huge opportunity. And they just they, they have to turn their nose up at it. And they're like, I'm not doing nothing too good for that. You know, the ego gets in the way. But he just went around, okay, I'll take this. I'll make this as awesome as possible. And he has. And now it's already evolving between Butch and Pete Dunn. And then with Ridgie, obviously he's a former rugby league player. He's got like, he's took a lot of hits, a lot of knocks. He's tough as they get. I know people who play rugby, rugby league, if you get hit with a rugby league player, you know what I mean? Like, and you get back up, it, it takes a lot of bleeding, like backbone and strength. And it takes a lot of like stamina and also a lot of will, you know what I mean? And fighting you. Like that's that's a really tough sport. So <clears throat> I'm proud to have the proudest point to have those two guys by my side. I want nothing for them but to succeed and be great. And of course, now going into Crown Jewel at this time, we're having a conversation right now. They're going in against the Usos and you know, in a marquee match and a title match, and they're gonna tear it up because they're just they're just getting better and better and better and better.
Seamus, as we wrap up here, I'd be remiss if we didn't talk a little bit more about Celtic Warrior work. Yeah, I'd love to. Um, I'd love to. I'd love there, to. There, there's so much. Is that my I mean, phone? Is that my phone or yours? No, no, no. All, all good, my man. Uh, my phone. I think we're good here. Oh, there, I turned it off. Sorry. All right, no worries. Um, you know, there is a lot. There's a huge audience for this, and I mean, I remember the first time I stumbled up upon it, I was so surprised by just the sheer size of it, the talent, the views, the subscribers. Like, people really yeah. love this series. I know you went went on quite a long hiatus. Can you walk me through why that hiatus happened, how we got to this relaunch, and how much it means to you to be able to really hit the ground running with this again? Yeah, so I'll just give you a quick st- back story. So, I mean, if we're not over, you can always edit this out, right? But uh, I'm not in a hurry to get off. No, I right, listen, you, you, as long as you're good, I'm good. I know I'm uh, out for you, so. Totally fine, I'm totally fine. Uh, so, because I'm, this is really passionate for me. So, with Celtic Warrior Workouts, there was a time when, like, I wasn't doing anything creative in W. Me and Claudio were together so, uh, in, the, in the bar. And, like, you know, we're doing great. But then the tag team division, sometimes it's just, like, you hit a lot of... Uh, cul-de-sacs you know because it wasn't that too many tag teams and it, you know what i mean it goes around um and i love i love being in a tag team but there's times where we just like creatively did nothing for us so I, I you know i had an idea with a friend of mine ireland to create this the youtube channel and the idea was not to be like every other youtube channel it's fitness like i'm not knocking other fitness channels there's some great ones out there Atley next by the way is fantastic it's very knowledgeable i've learned a lot from that and for people who are working out and they want to know why they're doing certain training techniques Adley Next explains everything. And he's got so many different ways of doing it. It's very scientific. But there's a lot of other stuff out there that was kind of fluff. It was like about making the other person, the person doing it, look how great I am doing these exercises. It was kind of intimidating. It didn't, to me, it didn't really inspire people who were having problems or having the issue of like trying to sort of work out. You know, that was the thing, trying to work. Like people who were not happy where they're at, but didn't know where to start when it came to working out. So, and also me, I was in this situation where I was just bored, man. I was just like, I was doing the same work over and over again. I was tired of it. I found it harder and harder to go to the gym. I'm like, it just became like a treadmill. You know what I mean? It's like I'm doing a conveyor, conveyor belt. I'm just doing the same workout all the time. I'm just bored of it. And then, you know, <clears throat> I worked out with this lad, Chris Cavallini, and I started doing all these like different workouts inside, sled pushes, battle ropes, you know, wall balls, like core stability stuff. And I was like, oh, this is fun. This is like, this is how workout should be. And then I was like, you know, what What if I started working out with some of the other W superstars? And because, you know, on Instagram, it's all these like, you know, it's all these guys and girls are in amazing shape, shredded, jacked up. And like, it's great to see, you know, but what's how do they get there? No one was born that way. Right. So when I started doing these workouts, I picked all the, you know, on my own time and everything. I was my own dime. I was at the weekends before live events. I was like, I'd ask a couple of talent to do them. And my thing was like, I'd ask them what their struggles were, you know, how they started working out, what tr- struggles they encountered, because the whole idea is the person watching at home are like, they can relate to that. You know what I mean? Like, it's not some superhero or by bi- our Superman or Supergirl or bionic person. It's just, oh, I woke up one morning and I killed it in the gym and all. Like, it's like, they're t- listen to these, these people, that they, these superstars that they look up to and they're finding out what their path was and what they overcame. And then you there, you realize, well, this person has the same struggles that I have had. And then I look at this workout and then, you know what? They're like, well, I want to do the Sasha Banks workout or the John Cena workout, or Becky Lynch or Seth Rollins workout, whatever. And they'll start doing it. And then they, it, it breaks the, it, they break ground with it. And then they're like, I love that. And then they go, well, there's another superstar can do that workout. And all of a sudden they're like, they start working out and they start to get, you know, they start to get fit and they enjoy fitness. And it's no longer an intimidation thing where if you go to a gym January 1st and it's like all these, Trainers don't really care about anyone who's trying to make money and sign you up and all that stuff. And it's very intimidating, people dropping weights. So the idea was to make fitness more more human, more approachable, more like everyday thing. And uh, and the response was incredible. Like some of the reviews I was getting, like, like this has changed my life. I was afraid to I didn't know how this mm-hmm. to work out. And I've watched this work out. And this, you know what I mean? So it just grew and grew and grew. And it was me and a guy called Ray, and we just did it on our own. He'd edit I'd shoot the videos, I'd pay the guy to video them and I'd send them to Ireland, he was in Ireland and edit them and it just grew and grew and it was just incredible. And then I guess the whole social media thing uh, with TikTok and not TikTok, with uh, Twitch and there's a couple other things that came in. So everything got put in the same blender. So I had to, I had to stop the channel because it was a whole like umbrella of social media, of third party stuff. So because I was in that mold and because I was doing it on my own, 
but I did it on my own with the intention to give the WWE. It just got it got closed down. So two and a half years. But then I was constantly in the back of my mind. Like I was told, Vince goes, oh, shut it down. You know, should I, should I? I was like, I was like, yeah, yeah, but I didn't shut it down. I kept it there because I knew there was going to be an opportunity. And then, of course, at Mania last year, you know, um, talked to everybody, Nick Khan, Triple H, you know, and Steph, and they were like, we want to get this channel back. And um, man, it's it's already been incredible. We got the Bianca Belair one is going to drop uh, tomorrow, I believe. I believe it's tomorrow. November 4th, that'll be. Yeah, November 4th. And then, of course, we've got a couple other ones in the can. And then Liv got Morgan, a few Bobby Lashley. We've got Bobby, Bobby, we've got Bobby, which is awesome. Incredible. Like, learned so much from him. And again, for me, who've been training since I was 16, I'm constantly learning from these people. From The stuff I learned from Bobby was incredible. Um, then we had, like, uh, you know, we had Austin Theory. Then we had the Liv Morgan one. That was a massive hit, you know. And so... Like this is all given. Like these these superstars, like every like W fan and all, even the people outside, but they have their own favorites. Austin Theory is another one. Arms all day, so like it's just incredible, and it, it, it's all motivational. There's no ego, and I go in there and I do their workouts, and it's like you know, it shows that even though I've been training for so long time, when you do someone else's workout, it's always hard. So the idea is making a brave change, you know, a brave change in your life. And they see me in there like struggling and panting and like trying to figure out the message given out there to people, like to everyone who, who is afraid of fitness or afraid to start. It's like, listen, I've been training my whole life and I'm, you know, I'm dragged to the dirt at the end of it. Like that. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm huffing and puffing and there's no shame in that. There's no shame in being vulnerable in your, in your, in your quest to get fit or, or change your lifestyle. So that's uh, it. But I love it. It's my passion. I, I, I mean, and you can tell it just oozes off the screen. Seamus, um, we got to get you out of here. So I'm going to leave you with the last word. I'll do my part very quickly first. Thank you so much for making an exception and talking to not only your dog, but me today. Uh, <laughs> if you guys want to check out the full feature with four. Seamus on cbsports.com. Sorry? Four I got four rescues, bro. Four rescue dogs. I, have, I love that. That's beautiful. Uh, I have a rescue as well. Uh, guys. Please, if you want to check out the full written feature with Seamus, cbsports.com, it's in the description of this video. If you're still here, you know what you got to do. Thumbs up, subscribe, notification bell, leave us a comment. Who would you like to see Seamus tie it up with? I know Brock Lesnar was a name I saw thrown around there. Seamus, ahead of Survivor Series War Games at TD Garden on Boston, in Boston on November 26th. Everyone go check out Celtic Warrior Workouts. If there's anything else you want to let the people know, please let them know. I just, uh, just you know, as I said, Celtic Warrior Workouts, it's, it's, it's back. I'm so excited about it. And uh, if you are looking to make that brave change in your life, just check it out and follow it. Even if, it is, if you just want to watch it, it's so much fun, especially watching me get my ass kicked by everybody uh, on the channel. But yeah, I said War Games is coming up. I've got a, a bone to pick with the bloodline after what they did to me arm, uh, my elbow uh, a couple of weeks ago. So I'll be fired up to get back in the ring and get back to work because I don't like sitting on the sideline, mate. It's not where, not where I want to be. I want to be in there in the ring and think of the action. And God help anybody who gets in front of this or these or this.